some dreams in the week before, after Brazil and, and so on, because we still had you know, the belief in us. It was difficult to be patient and do the normal preparation. As Formula One arrived in Abu Dhabi for the last race of 2010, it did so with four men involved in the greatest title struggle ever. Four drivers still in with a chance of winning is very unusual. I think all of us had key points where it probably slipped or, you know, the, the tide turned. That was one of his worst qualifying sessions, Mark Webber, when he needed it to be one of his best. We had uh, periods where, you know, we got treated like a hero and then other times where it was then a bit more rough for us. The atmosphere in the paddock, everyone was extremely pumped and excited, so it was difficult to be patient, wait and do the normal preparation. I can't recall at any other season having as many contenders for a championship. I feel confident now. This weekend is time to do it. The others are the ones that have to worry. I don't have to be cautious whatsoever. I believe in myself. I think it's time that we have a decider. You are tensed, you're nervous. In the end, I just said to myself, you know, try to win that race and everything that comes on top is a bonus. We've ended up with this incredibly intense series. When we went into the race, obviously I started from pole. I had the best position to start from. The aim was always to, to become world champion one day. Who will be champion today as we leave the grid in Abu Dhabi? Vettel moves forward. Alonso comes through with buttons, got the jump. Alonso down into fourth and Weber is fifth behind him. I was very proud to be part of the race in, in Abu Dhabi, part of the four guys who can still win the championship. Down into the turn five and we've got two Mercedes side by side and they make contact. Michael Schumacher around. Will he? Oh, oh. the big smash there. That's Lewis. He's gone straight into him as well. Oh, what a dramatic start. With it's Weber. Weber. He's coming in early. He tried this early in the season and it worked in Hungary and he's away and that was well done. Seemed to be no major problems there. But the problem he's got is he's way back, isn't he? I didn't know where the others were, so I didn't know whether winning is enough or not. Here comes Alonso. Oh, he's almost got into the wall then. You know, no matter what, Fernando was leading the championship before the race. So we knew that, first of all, we have to finish. And secondly, we get more points than him. And here oh. comes Alonso going through the inside of Petro, but he's gone off the track. He cannot gain position though. And Alonso there, a little mistake. Hamilton. Watching and all the spectators. Surely Red Bull will now respond. They did the right thing, leaving Vettel out. Of course, if you have highlights and you win races, it's nice and you enjoy. So Vettel comes in. But people try to knock you down and uh, you have bad results and you have to stand back up. Vettel retains the lead and critically ahead of that Sauber that they were trying oh, to he's monitor. He's almost together there, he's got to watch out though. That could have been a world championship making a pit stop. A round of applause there from Horner. I think, you know, in terms of mindset, we were, we had the exact right approach. Come on Sebastian, give it everything you got, come on. Of course you are tensed, you're nervous and you have this special nervousness going on. Sebastian Bettel flies down the pit straight and is he heading now towards the World Championship? Mark Webber down in eighth, stuck behind Alonso, he started there and he's going to finish there and how he'd love to finish where this man is heading now. In 1976 James Hunt had actually the same story because he never led the championship until the last race where he turned it around and he won the championship. It's a double for Red Bull! Oh, thank you, boy. Unbelievable. Thank you, I love you. Since I crossed the line, it has been uh, yeah, quite a journey so far. Obviously, it was extremely difficult to realize, and it still is, what happened. But uh, I'm very proud of that and proud of what I have achieved. But it's also a little bit weird and strange because you don't know how to handle that. I'm speechless, you know. I think it will, it will still take some time to realize. I mean, I didn't know where the others are. I knew that I was leading because I saw P1 on the pit board. And obviously, you know, when you start the race, you know where you are. It's just so difficult for me to, to put to put this in words, you know. Sebastian is a very, very deserving world champion. He's done a fantastic job this year. He's had some bad luck, but he's, he's never lost his focus. He's never lost his drive and determination. Now it doesn't get easier. Everyone is hunting us next year, so I will be very proud to have the number one on the car next year. When I'm tired.
Bastian Vettel, the sport's youngest ever world champion, winning by just four points from Fernando Alonso. Mark Webber finished third, with Lewis Hamilton just two points further back. And Red Bull were the constructors' champions. McLaren held on to second, and Williams just pipped Force India to sixth place by one point. Great. So then the season takes us to Japan. We know that Japan's important to Formula One and Formula One's important to Japan. But that weekend of all weekends, sport wasn't actually the most important thing at all. A massive earthquake has hit the northeast of Japan, triggering a devastating tsunami. Miles inland, washing away everything in its path. Thousands are feared dead. The world about the risk of a nuclear disaster in Japan. Increased the radiation is a catastrophe at the Fukushima plant. I'm really happy that the Japanese Grand Prix is going ahead. Japan has had a, a difficult time in 2011, so I think it's great that we're here and we can hopefully put on a great show and uh, put a smile on a lot of Japanese people's faces here. I try not to think about, you know, not to think about the championship. So that's why I think it was difficult in Japan all of a sudden because we're focused on Sunday and focused on the race. And yes, we knew we had the opportunity to win the championship already there, but really we were only focused on, on that race. Save number one, be a champion again! The form book absolutely assures us that in a little over 90 minutes from now, we'll be applauding a new double world Formula One champion. Vettel having to cover very early on against Jensen Button. Button had to lift the throttle as Vettel ruthlessly put him onto the grass. He's got to get a penalty for that, has he? The stewards thought it's not worth a penalty for Vettel. Move no, it, the rear tires. Move no, it, the rear tires. Vettel then pits from the lead. That looked a pretty tardy pit stop to me. The McLaren boys are in the pit lane. But in a way then. And look at that. Look at that. Button is ahead of Vettel. As soon as I saw myself come out the pits in front of Sebastian, looked at my mirrors and saw him behind, I knew that uh, it would be a very different race what we had experienced with Sebastian most of the year. Instead of him just cruising around looking after his tyres, he actually had to fight for it, and um, it definitely made me smile. Button under pressure in the closing stages of the race. Oh, McLaren, marginal because of the amount of fuel that they're able to run during this Grand Prix. Trying to conserve fuel while you've got two angry world champions chasing you down, it's pretty tough. And Button does the fastest middle sector of the entire Grand Prix. The dream scenario here in Japan would be a, a Japanese driver to win this race. Dream scenario number two would be Jensen Button, Japanese girlfriend, got the messages on his crash helmet. Save Japan, we pray for Japan. He didn't lose his head when he got shoved onto the grass. His philosophy was, don't get angry, get even. And he certainly has done that. Jensen Button brilliantly wins the Japanese Grand Prix. You know, you could say it's slightly overshadowed by Seb winning the championship. The new world champion, Sebastian Vettel. But not for me, it wasn't, you know, winning in front of the, the Japanese fans. And I pulled up just after the finish line and got out and waved to the crowd. And, the, the, you know, the atmosphere was, was fantastic. It was just like I'd won the world championship myself, not Sebastian. Sebastian, you're the 2011 world champion. Well done. Thank you so much. We took nothing for granted, and we did it. If he was my son, I'd be so proud. And I, I say that without any hesitation. He is just an exemplary boy.
I've never seen my missus cry at a Grand Prix before, so um, even when I've won a race, so it means a lot to her. It's her home Grand Prix, and it's, uh, yeah, when she cries, it's difficult for me not to, but um, I'm going to try and hold it together right now. <laughs> um. There's no question in my mind that his name is etched on the trophy of the great drivers of Formula One. Here. You just take a look up there at that monitor. This is this is the Hall of Fame that you are joining. These are the fellow back-to-back -back Formula One world champions, and you are now part of them. Just seeing those sort of heroes is already very emotional because I think. Um, you know, that's one of the great things about Formula One. There's a lot of history and tradition and in a way you can compare yourself to that. Um, when I was young, I was dreaming about Formula One and so, you know, I, I love the history. So I know reasonably well, um, you know, about obviously the big names and uh, what happened in the past. You try not to think consciously about yourself and your success and what you might have achieved, etc. But then when you see you know, all of a sudden people telling you, okay, you are now at the same step as these guys. That's, that's hard to put in words. Maybe there are some people around that are really in love with themselves, but uh, for us, you know, we, we are who we are and we just love what we do. And then all of a sudden to... The one that really meant something to Adrian Newey, Christian Horner and the team. It's a team effort and they confirm they're the best team in the world. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. Thank you, boy. What a race. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. We keep on working. We do our thing. We are who we are. Sebastian Vettel will have thoroughly enjoyed that. Great drive, fantastic. We've won the constructors. Thank you. Well done. An Olympic afternoon here on BBC One, looking back at the most memorable moments of the Golden Games in an hour. Then London 2012, as you've never seen it before. Through the lens, the commentators and presenters' story is at three. But before all that, what a year for Formula One. It was a season like no other. An unfolding story so full of twists and turns, it could have been the product of Hollywood. A script that brought together flesh and metal, emotion and power, the greatest car chase ever. It dealt in fantasy, in impossible happenings, unpredictable at every scene. Old favourites returned to the stage to show they'd lost none of their luster. Some stars dimmed, reduced to mere extras, as we embraced new heroes with familiar names. We cheered for the underdog, a celebration cut short. Like an action movie, it kept you on the edge of your seat. Bravery, excitement, glamour. A life out of reach. Subplots evolved, storylines changed. Triumphs and pitfalls, a love story gone sour. Heroes and villains switching in a moment. It had to be scripted. An epic tale requires the perfect backdrop. And this one was altered with every episode. Some of these supporting stars came with stripes, greeted with a warm fanfare. Others became the focus themselves as the tension rose. Still, the old director stood firm. The greatest story ever told has an ending just as captivating. 
Lights out. Camera. Action. Abu Dhabi has been quite a good place for us in the past. On that particular day, it wasn't. Sebastian Vettel comes out of the last corner. He's third. It was obviously a good session for us. Alonso is not going fastest. Unfortunately, it was uh, uh, six cars faster than us today. Stop the car. Stop the car. I mean, that night uh, we were waiting to see what was going on. I mean, it was very long to understand there was no fuel in the car. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to, you know, you understand what I mean. Sebastian Vettel's been demoted to the back of the grid for a fuel irregularity. Sebastian Vettel starting from the pit lane. Yeah, for sure it was a big hit because, you know, the championship is closing in and there's less and less races to, you know, may maybe make up for things like that happening. No, that was tough, but we took a strategic decision to say, OK, we're starting from the back, let's withdraw the car from the grid and therefore out of part Fermi, make a few little changes because if we're going to overtake, you know, we're going to maybe need to take a bit of wing off the car. In the end of the day, you know, I think it was a strong point for us to see the opportunities we had rather than always thinking what would be if get on with it and focus on, on the race. A track layout which hasn't seen much overtaking. Vettel will hope to change all that. Before the race, he had the confidence. He said, I'll see you on the podium. And I thought, well, that's confident. Lights out, away we go. Lewis Hamilton lights it up. Starting from the pit lane. This is about scrapping for a few points. Alonso gets alongside. He's trying to take the place. What a move. Vettel goes on the attack. Sebastian, there is damage on your right hand side. A difficult afternoon, looking like it's going to get even worse. Rosberg is out. Rosberg has crashed out of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and safety car has been deployed. What is he doing? He's stopping all the time. That's definitely damaged his front wing now. It looks like he will need to come for that nose change. So then he's had a wing change. He's at the back of the grid again for the restart and then started to come through the field. Now, can he challenge on the restart? Vettel eventually gets it. Hamilton's in trouble. What is going on? Kimi Raikkonen leads the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Alonso goes up into second place. He's got past Maldonado. What a break. Oh, it's going to touch Weber as well. It's all gone horribly wrong. Will there be back. another safety car, Ben? This closes it all up together, and suddenly Sebastian Vettel will be with the race leaders in a fast Red Bull. Sebastian Vettel as he tries to find a way past Jensen Butter. This is for a podium position, remember. Oh, and there's Vettel trying to get past Button. He might have done it this time. Oh, beautifully done. Alonso is charging here. He's looking for victory. Can you tell me when he gets to the end, Ben? I'm covering my eyes. The excitement here. Alonso running out of time. He's done it. Kimi Raikkonen wins. Alonso finishes in second. Sebastian Vettel, a brilliant third place to retain the championship lead. That was just such a tenacious drive. We'd limited the damage. Fernando only scored three more points than us. And that was a crucial, crucial moment because, you know, we could have quite easily left Abu Dhabi, you know, with having lost the lead in the, in the championship. Thank you, boys. Never leave. Never stop believing.
Fernando Alonso was delighted to be on the podium yet again, but seeing his main championship rival there as well, I think really took the wind out of his sails. Well, it was not easy from the emotional point of view to handle because um, you felt that uh, we didn't take the opportunity that uh, he was given uh, because of external things that we were not able to control. Vettel was very lucky. He had a lot of luck with the safety car. He had a lot of positions that he was able to make up. Pit stops, the whole lot. And it resulted in him being on the... Ferrari would have been distraught. That was, for me, the pure sign, if they first signs for them, that, hey, this championship could be going away from us. In some ways, it was right that a remarkable season came down to the very last race. One of these greats, and yeah. there's no question, Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso are great, great drivers. One of them is going to walk away with this title today. Which one? In normal condition, Sebastian would have easily taken the place because he's very good, the car is very, very strong. But we also know that when you are under pressure, you, <laughs> you start to tremble. 13 points the gap in the championship. Even if Vettel falls off the road, Alonso has to finish top three to win this championship. None of us could have predicted what was about to unfold. Everything that could happen, happened. And uh, everything that could go wrong, in a way, went wrong. <laughs> Lights out, away we go, and Hamilton versus Button off the front row. Vettel away slowly. Wow, we have a race on our hands. Vettel did not get away at all well there. It seems that he had the worst start of the season. For Sebastian, because of the tension, that is natural. I mean, nothing strange. Eh? They are very young guys, eh? don't forget that. As a it's Vettel! It's Vettel! It's Vettel! Been hit. Down at turn four. How much damage is on the Red Bull? What drama here on the first lap in Brazil? At that point, you think that's it, it's over. It was uh, obvious that Fernando, because he always is on the podium, was going to finish on the podium, which is what he needed to achieve uh, to win the championship. Usually in that moment you think it's over, you're out of the race. In that particular moment probably it's over, I'm out of the championship. But in that case I was just, I just wanted to get going again, going again. Our priority was to be in the podium because uh, whatever happened to Sebastian, if we are not in the podium, we had no chance. Alonso moves up into third place, which is where he needs to be if Vettel gets no points here today. I didn't know how much damage there was, um, so I drove past the main straight close to the pit wall to give Adrian and give people a chance to have a look. Sebastian, there's visible damage, but stay out to see where the car behaves. We cannot fix it. It's not front wing. We cannot fix the damage. There was a lot of damage to the exhaust system and the aerodynamics in that part of the car. But then he started coming back. Vettel's just done a quick lap faster than anybody else. This isn't over yet. Alonso's gone Alonso. wide. Alonso's gone wide. Hulkenberg's gone past. Vettel's just trying to pick him off one by one. Fantastic by the Red Bull. He was determined that he wasn't going to let the championship slip away. I just kept going. Surprisingly quickly, I was behind Fernando. <laughs> Look at Hulkenberg challenging Hamilton for the lead. Oh, and no! it's tight. Oh, they've made contact! Hamilton and Hulkenberg! And now that's going to be Button leading and Alonso in second place. Hamilton's final race at McLaren ends with a damaged car. Sebastian, the radio does not work. The radio does not work. It was too dry for Inters at that point, so we had to stick to our basic rule of we've got to fit the right tyres for that moment. This is a crucial call for Red Bull to keep him on slick tyres. That's a brief decision from Red Bull. And within 30 seconds, it started to rain. Box, box, box. His radio had stopped working. He could hear us, but we couldn't hear him. They didn't have the tyres ready. Look, it just took so long to get them on. Vettel's obviously made the call. The team haven't heard him. And he wow. arrived in the pit lane, and then it was like, well, what does he want? It must be intermediates. If they finish where they are now, Alonso would be world champion. Again, at that stage, you think, that's it. It's gone. And you think it's all over. But then again, Sebastian started coming through. 
Brave cut back into the inside. And he got himself back into that vital seventh position that became sixth when, surprisingly to all of us, you know, Michael Schumacher waved him through. Michael Schumacher. His gift in his last race is he doesn't put up any resistance at all to his young German friend. We were really hoping that it would have been a, a better fight, but uh, I think that Michael finishes his career there. He didn't want to be seen the one that was keeping the world champion behind. Sebastian, this position is good enough. Your current position is good enough. Ten laps to go, I had the call that where we currently are is enough. But still I try to push because maybe, you know, there is some odd situation, someone spins. And Dress has had a crash. They are behind safety car. There will be no further changes. Jensen Button takes victory. Second place goes to Alonso, but with sixth place, Sebastian Vettel is the 2012 Formula One World Champion. You're the World Champion. You're the Triple World Champion, Sebastian Vettel. You are the man. You're a Triple World Champion. Having succeeded and everything just falls off, you know, and it just... That's straightforward, mate, wouldn't it? That's straightforward. In a way, you don't even have the power to maybe realise what happened or the power to celebrate the way you probably thought or dreamt of, you know, celebrating. If you put him, yourself in his shoes, I think that uh, he, he knows and he knew at that stage that uh, he would have deserved the championship. Sebastian Vettel, he is the third driver in history to have taken three titles in a row. This is the incomparable Fangio, calm and courageous, daring yet relaxed. To prove beyond all doubt his claim to immortality as one of the greatest drivers the world has ever known. I grew up hearing about Fangio and I thought no one will ever do that. But Michael Schumacher's done it today. This is history. Sebastian Vettel, you are the world champion. The world champion, well done, enjoy it. You are the man. Yes! You know, rather than to look up in a certain book, check the number, ah, oh, look. I have done this, we have done this. That's not what it really is about, you know, it's looking back, thinking of the race in Brazil, looking back, standing on the wall in Japan, looking back, you know, crying and feeling completely empty in Abu Dhabi. This is what you, you know, was, what no one can take away from you. And uh, I think this will last probably until the last day I'm on this planet and will say goodbye at, at some stage. It's only a great driver in a great moment is able to deliver that package. For me, he will in time become one of the real greats of our sport.
After Hungary, I definitely thought there might be the smallest window, like a couple of percent chance that we could actually close the gap to them. But then when we got back after the break, they had taken a huge step and there was nothing we could do about it. Lights out, away we go, and Lewis Hamilton makes a very good getaway from pole position. Sebastian Vettel slots in behind. Well, brave stuff from the start, no contact around the first Look corner. Look up front, Vettel's taken the lead. Vettel has got past Hamilton. It's like flying a you know, propeller plane against a, a jet plane. That's what it's like, you know, because they have so much downforce. And Vettel wins in Belgium, and he continues to build that championship advantage. Thank you, the car was absolutely fantastic. Nice work, yes! You know, for sure we made a few little tweaks to the car, but nothing radical. We had a, a tidy up of a few areas, and I think Sebastian just selected another gear because from that point onwards he was in unbelievable form. Looking like a rock in the park for Sebastian Vettel out front. Coming through to win the Italian Grand Prix, it's Sebastian Vettel! Whatever he had to eat during his summer break or whatever he did, he came back a different person because he was supreme and he never really looked back at all. Vettel gets off the line well. him back through turn two. Look at how he's opening that lead up already, David. Vettel is flying. What we saw there was man and machine in perfect harmony. Yes! 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 That's what I call in control. Yes, I'm loving it! Sebastian is, is looking pretty good, isn't it? But it's always this man that seems to be chasing you up here on the podium with you. Please don't do that. That's not correct. They're on a tour, you know, they go around with a bus. <laughs> <laughs> He's a young man, like anybody. When you walked out onto the podium and, you know, you've driven your heart out and you hear people, you, you know, deriding that, it's tough for anybody to take. Do you think the incident in Malaysia was the catalyst for the booing that Seb, that sort of seemed to follow Seb around the world thereafter? For sure, 100%. You know, he'd been the villain, he'd taken a win away from, from Mark Webber. That, together with being a serial winner. Sebastian Vettel wins in Korea again! Thank you! Yes! You should admire success, not be jealous of it. Suzuka is his circuit. Ichiban! Ichiban! He knew he would be able to turn it around. You are going against factual evidence if you think that he's not worthy of being a champion and that team has not done a fantastic job. Sebastian Vettel is the 2013 world champion. Of course, when he expressed his emotion, everything changed, everything turned around. And the reaction he got in India was something like I've, I've never seen before.
has achieved and he has joined such an incredibly select group. This is the incomparable Fangio, one of the greatest drivers the world has ever known. Ella Prost, a four brilliant championship from the Frenchman. I grew up hearing about Fangio and I thought no one will ever do that. But Michael Schumacher has done it today. This is history. You know, for all the kids, for all of us, um, we looked up to him. He was, he was our hero. Now you're in a position where kids will be looking up to you. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird because, you know, um, I'm still a kid somehow and uh, at least I feel like it. I believe that he is in the realm of greatness. Uh, he's right up there with all of the great greats of this world of Formula One. When Red Bull dominate one year, it's okay. They have a, a great uh, aerodynamics and they have a great team. When it's happening constantly every year, uh, there are more frustration and uh, the atmosphere in, the, in all the other teams are getting a uh, little bit uh, worse. Arguably, still in love with the idea of winning a title with Ferrari, but perhaps not still in love with Ferrari. Fernando, are you getting frustrated with Ferrari? We understand that your manager has been speaking to Red Bull. Are you looking to leave Ferrari and go to Red Bull? No, no, no. I'm concentrating the championship. These are uh, rumours. It's been very clear he is disenchanted. Has your manager been to speak to Red Bull? I don't think so. Not that you know of? No, not that I know. I think the way he spoke on the team radio, um, there's not a person who believes that was genuine. Well, I think what confirms that is the fact that De Montezemolo, the president of Ferrari, came out afterwards and very publicly gave him a little slap back into his place and said that no one is bigger than the team. I believe he'll win a title with Ferrari. Um, whether he'll end up winning as many titles as Sebastian Vettel, well, you know, who knows. And of course, Massa will no longer be with Ferrari at the end of the season. Kimi is signed for Ferrari. Oh, they almost touch, just manages to find some space. Fabulous move from Kimi Raikkonen. He's lining up for Nano Alonso for the pass, and he's going to go past his future teammate. Raikkonen down the inside. Abu Dhabi, and the last time we saw Kimi. <laughs> it's like as if he didn't want to be there. Raikkonen's out! Raikkonen's out! We were not privy to the financial situation at that moment, and we were saying, why is this happening? Why would he leave Lotus? Why would he go there? But the reality was, as has now been played out, he, he wasn't paid. He dealt as uh, nicely as uh, I could have dreamed, to be honest. He also did his job until very late in the season. It's just bad business. You cannot not pay your staff. Of course it has an effect on your mind. That had a huge effect on Kimmy's performance. And Sebastian Vettel takes his 11th win of the season. Brilliant, brilliant job, well done. So we hop across the pond to Austin, Texas, and everyone gets a bit of a surprise, mostly Sergio Perez that is out at the end of the season. Certainly caught me, I have to say. Well done, McLaren. I think they got me back for uh, the previous year with Hamilton because I was stumbled, I have to say. I was very surprised. I thought he had done enough just to keep his seat. No, I think he's done a good job. But uh, you've got to look forward. I think, uh, you know, in simple terms, last year, uh, Jensen was out qualified by his teammate by, on, on average, 0.3 of a second, out race on uh, an average of 0.17 of a second and uh, so Jensen is a fantastic member of this team but uh, if you're aspiring to uh, be a champion in the future then you've got to go out and beat Jensen. When I, came, I joined McLaren the car was extremely difficult and uh, every Friday since the start of the season until a couple of races ago we were always changing everything every Friday it was a learning experience for, for us so for sure that was going to have Jensen with his experience with the team. It's a cutthroat business and you've got to come in and, and do a great job. 
and then if you do, you've got a great career in front of you, but if not, you, you're out. So. Perez didn't deliver, and I'm not surprised. And also, if you look at the history of McLaren, whenever they have a bad, bad season, they drop a driver. They've done it time and time again. So it's part and parcel of how they react. Apparently, it was the engineers had a vote, and they all voted that Magnussen, who they knew well from testing, was going to be more potential and more exciting than keeping Perez. Away we go, the two Red Bulls going for it. Vettel with a slightly better start. Watch for Grosjean behind as they come down the hill. Grosjean's got into second place and Weber lost out big time. Austin is the best Grand Prix we have been doing so far. The Red Bull was so quick behind me. Mark was so quick behind me, always chasing me. Weber closing the gap, closing the gap. Is he going to make a lunge for it? He has a, no, he has a think but he's just trying to unsettle Grosjean. To run most of the race under the pressure of a Red Bull car and uh, didn't do any mistakes at all. The race is a go. He would have probably found a way to go, but as we work, uh, we get better and better, then uh, he just couldn't. Sebastian Vettel to take his first ever win in the USA. And Grosjean holds on for his best result of the year in second. And actually, I think he's got the praise of a couple of drivers after this race, including Mark. Unfortunately, he's getting quite experienced and uh, he's learning some tricks. We should probably start with the race, but I would like to start with the hat. I'm not very good with the lasso right now, but I can train a little bit to come back next year. <laughs> we catch one bull next year, hopefully we catch two. a whole 180 because if you go back to Monaco he crashed that car four times over the weekend and I think it's fair to say you both thought he was out. I think I was dancing quicker than the music. He was frustrated to not delivering when Kimi was. I just wanted to, to go too quick. If I was going back there today it would be fairly different. No one has ever doubted he's got outright speed. He's won pretty much every championship he's raced in, apart from Formula One. But what he didn't have previously, and I think it's absolutely fair criticism, is consistency. But as he's matured, he's starting to deliver that. The second half of the season for Paul de Resta wasn't good, was it? I mean, he got most of his points up until Silverstone, and in career was the fifth time in a row that he hadn't finished the race. Oh, and off has gone Paul de Resta. Oh, no. And this is another retirement for Paul de Resta. It was a difficult period to go through. You know, we had one race, we had an incident with Maldonado. I made a mistake at the Monza Grand Prix. Singapore was going to be one of the, I think, the best drives of my career and took six laps to go. And we experienced something we've never experienced before in terms of the wake of a car in front. And uh, unfortunately, I went off in which was going to be a sixth position, which, if you look at my points tally, would be crucial. A driver wants to have a strong end to his season because when people are signing drivers and looking at what the options are, you want to be there saying, look, here I am outperforming the car. I think he suffered badly because the tyre change. That car, the Force India, was not anywhere close to how good it was at the beginning of the season. Leaving Brazil, there's going to be some emotions, clearly. You know, I've put a lot into this, a long time in Formula One and a long time to get there. Last day at the office in Formula One. Uh, got to try and treat it like another race. I think uh, definitely different emotions uh, this morning. I think it starts to hit a little bit that, uh, yeah, it's the last time you'll be doing this as an F1 driver, but that's that's fine, that's good. And uh, what what I want, oh, it's basically, a, it's not a sad moment, it's a, it's a proud moment. It's just emotions that you, you have to accept that uh, you've got to be able to let go. Mark, good right. luck. There you go. Luck. You know it's the right time to stop, but you still can't accept that it is. You still want to do it, but you're still on that slippery slope then. So what's the point of continuing at that level? You can't do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Mark, welcome to Interlagos final day in school. How do you feel? Yeah, good. Very good. Yeah, no, ready to go. and. Uh, See how we go. Is it possible to win? 
Of course. For sure we're going to miss him. He's been a massive part of this team for seven years. Hey, big man. He could have gone in for long for another couple of years. Unfortunately, yeah, he fell out of love with the sport. Not easy getting the car the last time. He's a tough competitor. He's a grisly, bad-tempered competitor sometimes, but he pushed. Lights out. Away we go. And Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg go together. Rosberg leads. Vettel into second. Then it's Hamilton. Alonso's in fourth place. Massa making up some ground as well, but he just drops in behind Mark Webber. Here comes Vettel. No doubt about it. He's on the charge. No DRS on the opening lap, but Vettel doesn't care. He blasts past Nico Rosberg. Webber's got a bit of a chance here. Hamilton runs wide. Oh, he gives him just enough space. I'm not sure he can do it, or can he? He's done it. He's into four. Brave pass. No sign of any lack of commitment from Mark Webber on his last Grand Prix. Mark Webber now attacking Nico Rosberg. Around the outside he goes. And Webber trying to take the third place. I think he's done it, yes. Alonso and Webber might get a decent run here. Mark Webber alongside and takes the place. He takes the place from the Ferrari and Webber goes up into second position. Sebastian Vettel wins in Brazil and he equals one of the oldest records in Formula One. Nine consecutive Grand Prix wins and he's the only driver to have done that in one season. Mark Webber finishes in second place in his final Grand Prix. What a way to bow out of Formula One. Fantastic career. It's been brilliant working with you. You can be proud of everything you've done, because we certainly are. Well done. Obviously, Seb and I have had our challenges over time, but... Uh... You know, it's easier to probably have a, a bit easier relationship with, with Fernando because he's on the same team. It's good to race through the last time. But um, to finish on the podium with those two guys, they have been the best of this generation. It still meant a lot to me, showing that I could still drive well at the end of my career. And I uh, got the timing right. We didn't have the best, best relationship, but I can certainly say that I learned a lot from him. I learned to become a better driver due to to his skills which he has and uh, that's why I consider him as one of the the drivers with the most talent we have on the grid they're both the same they're both cut from the same cloth they're both aggressive competitive fast hungry drivers that's why they've had the success that they have and it's been uncomfortable and lumpy at times but it's worked and we've had you know, almost 20 one-two finishes between the two of them. We've won four Constructors World Championships between the two of them. We've won nearly lucky to come up against a phenomenon. You know, the guy that might rewrite the history books. Best driver raced against in F1, oh, it's probably between seven. Fernando. Fernando over two hours is, is a handful. You know, he is a handful. There's no question about that. Over one lap, I think that um, he's not with, with Seb. But on Sundays, you know, between those two, I think it's, it's very, very tight. I don't know, time will tell us, I think. When uh, he will have a car like the others, if he wins, uh, he will have a, a great recognition and uh, he will be one of the legends in Formula One. When one day he has a car like the others and he's 4th, uh, 5th, 7th, these four titles will be bad news for him because people will, will take these four titles even in a worse manner than what they are doing now. So there are uh, interesting times for Sebastian coming. For sure there will be always some people thinking that you have to do this and you have to do that. Um, I don't know, I think you can think about this a lot. Uh, in the end of the day, I think we don't have to, to prove anything. Uh, I think we've proven enough. Is Seb now one of the all-time greats? He has to be. He has to be. At 26 years of age, he's won four world championships. There's only, what is there, three other drivers in the history of the sport in over 60 years that have achieved that. 
He's gone up against some fantastic drivers in Fernando, in Lewis, in Kimi, in Mark Webber, in Jensenbach. You know, it's a quality grid that he's up against. And he's delivered. And he delivers time and time again. And it's easy to say, yeah, he's got the best car. But we run two cars. You know, one car won 13 races. And the other driver's no idiot. You know, he's a very, very fast racing driver, Mark Webber. And it'd be easy to underestimate how good Mark actually is. I think Sebastian this year has just, again, come of age. And um, I think what we've witnessed this year is actually something very, very special. I think it was incredible. And, uh, you know, how hard it is to win a Grand Prix, to win nine consecutively, is just phenomenal and uh, it defies logic in many respects so yes it was hu superhuman effort from Sebastian I think he would see that that was his best season ever and he gets very emotional we're hearing him have a love affair with his team seemingly over team radio we have to remember these days we have to remember these days there's no guarantee that they will last forever I love you guys I'm so proud of you I love you the doubters will just see that as annoying. But actually, if you just step back for a moment and try and imagine yourself in that position, you find yourself in a great car, you find yourself with heaps of talent, and you find yourself breaking records that the, the sport in all its history has never seen the likes before. Why would you not have those outcries of emotion? Why would you not want to say to people, this is incredible, enjoy this moment? Nobody has ever done what you've just done in the history of the sport. Man, I'm proud.